bio-treatment of neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids are one of the most widely used nicotine-based pesticides in the world. They've been used on seeds in agricultural fields all over Canada, the United States, as well as Europe. But, recently, the European Union has taken steps to ban the usages of such pesticides in their countries, as they have been found to have detrimental impact on aquatic as well as terrestrial invertebrates. One example is that this pesticide attacks bees' nervous system, making them vulnerable to disease, as well as causing colony collapse disorder, where bees leave their hives and cannot find their way back. Since North America has not taken the steps to ban neonicotinoids, we have to look at other methods to treat the situation. This presentation will focus on introducing two treatment methods, the first being microbiological treatment, and the second method using UV light and ozonation to treat contamination. These are the microbes, and they can be used to treat the contamination using an in-situ treatment of the soil. When microbes are injected into the ground, they consume the carbon chains in the pesticides and remediate the land over time. Often, this process involves using native microbes that are already present at the site. However, some microbes need a little boost, so they can dominate the field. This can be done through biostimulation. Biostimulation is the process of providing nutrients and oxygen to microbes in order to enhance their growth and the biodegradation process. Bioaugmentation is the addition of microorganisms to enhance biodegradation when there is a lack of appropriate indigenous microorganisms, or in some cases, the soils are re-inoculated with indigenous microorganisms isolated from the same soil. In the treatment of agricultural field for pesticide compounds, microbes, oxygen, and nutrients can be delivered through bioventing. Bioventing is the method of treatment in which injection wells are constructed at the location of the contamination. Air is then injected at a low rate, as well as nutrients and water if needed. Oxygen and nutrients stimulate the biodegradation process by increasing the microbial activity, releasing the non-toxic degradation process. Let's look at an example. We're interested in treating imidacloprid, a widely used neonicotinoid. This nitrogen radical is called magic nitro due to its binding properties which allow the chemical to bind to the insect. Pseudomona is the microbe which is chosen to be used as it is a naturally occurring genus and can be used to degrade many different types of pesticides. The reason why it is so often chosen to degrade pesticides is due to its excellent metabolizing properties. In imidacloprid, the pseudomona bacteria attacks the nitrogen groups and changes its molecular structure. The Pseudomonas bacteria can degrade imidacloprid by metabolizing the nitrogen group and producing guadenine derivatives, as well as urea metabolites. However, the guadenine can be toxic. Luckily, it has a very short half-life and is not considered dangerous. Urea is naturally present in the soil and is not a concern. Let's look at some pros and cons. The pros of using microbiological methods to cure the ground it's comparatively cheap, it's non-disruptive to growing seasons, and it can be used with indigenous microbes. The cons is the partial degradation which may potentially result in volatile products. The inoculation time is unclear and varies from place to place. And there is also variability of environmental parameters that can reduce um, the in-situ microbial bioremediation with temperature, humidity, pH, and organic matter. We don't always have to treat the soil. Sometimes we can treat the runoff water. Let's look at an ex situ treatment of neonicotinoid pesticides using ozonation and UV. A good way to degrade biologically and chemically stable molecules is with the advanced oxidation process. Ozonation belongs to this and is used mainly in disinfecting drinking water. When coupled with UV rays, efficiency is increased to degrade neonicotinoids. Ozone is a strong oxidizing agent and in turn a great sanitizer. To create ozone, oxygen molecules must be subjected to energy, either electrical charges or ultraviolet light. This energy will separate oxygen molecules, making atoms react with other oxygen molecules to form ozone gas. Since ozone gas is highly volatile, it is important that the ozone is generated at the application site. Let's look at coupling ozonation with UV degradation. This process is called photolytic ozonation. When UV is paired with ozonation in alkaline conditions, oxygen atoms break off the molecule using the high energy input. The oxygen atom then reacts with water molecules to make hydroxyl radicals, which are reactive in enhanced degradation of organic molecules, particularly neonicotinoids. At the same time, water can be included in the initial chemical reaction, making an intermediate product called hydrogen peroxide, a less powerful oxidant than ozone. 
Under the influence of UV, however, hydrogen peroxide will degrade into hydroxyl radicals as well. Ideally, a system that incorporates photolytic ozonation will be something like this. The pesticide-ridden influent will enter a water treatment facility into an oxidation reactor where all the oxidation and degradation of pesticides will take place. This includes a UV lamp and an ozone generator. Everything then travels into a water tank and is pumped through a biological aerating filter, as well as a filter for metal oxides. An aerator is then used to filter in this particular design. The effluent finally travels into a final water tank before exiting the facility pesticide-free. We hope that these two treatments will help reduce the contamination in our environment and eventually remediate the damage done to the ecosystem.